a Big Spark Studios original. Uh, well, it's we're live, doll. We're live from New York. It's Saturday night. Ex- exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> this is the cold open. <laughs> Get ready. Three. (laughs) I just fall over. I'm like comedy. (laughs) Hey, everybody. What's up? And welcome back to Unhinged with Chris Clemens. Now, before we get into today's episode, be sure you are subscribed to Unhinged with Chris Clemens wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like video episodes, we put them up on my channel, youtube.com slash Chris. And also rate and review, guys. Give us five stars or four. Honestly, just don't give us one. Those really bum me out. Um, now I guess what I already said before we got into the thing, but, um, today's episode, we're talking about something very topical, which I know that a lot of you might be worried based off of my reading abilities that were showcased during when we used to talk about topical things, but living in America with all of the technology and the science And all of that. The biggest news story coming out of here is that our former president is getting indicted uh, for 34 charges or something. So that's really exciting. Um, But because of this, I figured the charitable shout out today should be uh, going towards just one of the many minority communities that have been victimized by this little pudgy orange pug. Um, So today we are shouting out womenslaw.org. They provide information that is relevant to people of all genders, not just women. Their email hotline will provide legal information to anyone who reaches out with legal questions or concerns regarding domestic violence, sexual violence, or any other topic covered on womenslaw.org. I just think it's a great resource for people to have who find themselves in situations that you already feel helpless in. Um... So go check them out, go learn more, go volunteer, go donate. Um, But the links will be down below in the episode. And now we're going to find out just uh, (laughs) a whole lot about this indictment because once again, we all know my reading comprehension level. Um, Now, one of my absolute best friends just finished law school. That's right, girls. That is right. Um, But my friend is generously uh, agreed. I don't know how. I really didn't even have to do that much convincing. But um, she has agreed to kind of break down everything going on for dummies. So this is the segment, Indictment for Dummies. Let's begin. (laughs) All right, Eileen, you can unmute. Okay, I'm unmuted. (laughs) You're unmuted, doll. How are you? Good, how are you? You're not dumb. We went to the same college. (laughs) Yeah, we both have art degrees. <laughs> it's not like we went to like business school, girl. I mean, I'm my, yes, I I do have a degree in photography. <laughs> so that's exciting. You went on to do much better things. Good for you. <laughs> no, but I will definitely use my degree in drama to add some flavor for sure. No, I really think you're onto something with that. Like, I think I should mime it, maybe. Yeah. Y- <laughs> we'll save that for Patreon. Um, now, what, first of all, is an indictment? Like, Yeah. Yeah. So an indictment is like the second step in a prosecutor, like making their case. So first, before they can indict somebody, they have to impanel a grand jury and they show like a teaser trailer of the case. Ooh. So the grand jury meets in secret. And it's like 23 people. Is that like a jury duty jury? Or like, is this like a Supreme Court kind of grand jury? Like it's the same people for every case. It's just 23 Joe Schmoes usually. Slay. New Yorkers, I think in this case, but. You know. Got it. Okay. But it's just like a jury and they get to look at the evidence and then they decide if charges should even be brought. So there's like a little barrier to like charging people for the prosecutor. Like first they have to be able to show the grand jury. Like we have a good reason to bring these charges. We're pretty sure a crime has been committed. Okay. And so like in this case, the grand jury found like that they could indict, which means like they looked at the evidence that was presented by the New York district attorney's office. And they were like, okay, this seems like, yeah, something we should look into. (laughs) 
Wow, maybe he is a criminal. <laughs> Who could tell? <laughs> this seems super sus. I don't know. Yeah, maybe you should like go forward with this. So that's what <laughs> that's when you get to the indictment stage. And an indictment is like the government putting you as the defendant, which would be Trump in this case, on notice that they think you committed a crime. Okay, so he's the defendant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, just uh, just clarifying, there's no such thing as a dumb question. <laughs> And that he's being prosecuted by the government. Love. That's, wait, that's wild. So does he have 34 <laughs> indictments or 34 charges? Yeah. He has 34 counts. Count, right. Okay, so it's like the indictment is like a piece of paper. It's like a notice saying like, this is what we're charging you with. We think you did this, this, and that crime. Usually there's facts in it, but they also sometimes in New York do this thing where they do it separate. It's a QR code. Yeah, you see a QR yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, oh no, the government's so mean. Yeah, no, it's like <laughs> it's like the statement of facts is separate. So they have like all these facts in the separate filing that they did. And it's honestly it's like 50 pages long. It's pretty dense and it has like all of this stuff from the investigation they've been doing of Trump saying like this is what we think his pattern of behavior is and all this different stuff um about different women that he's also paid off at different times or different stories that he tried to do the catch and kill thing that they're talking about with the national Enquirer. Yeah. So they put a lot of facts in there of stuff that right now they don't seem to actually be charging, but I think they're trying to show like the pattern of that. This is something he did he used to pay people he had affairs with to keep the affair under wraps to help his campaign. Like this might be a, st oh, to help his campaign. Okay, got it. Yeah. I was like, so why would he pay off all these people? And why is that a business punishment? I, I get it now. So he paid Stormy this money, right? Stormy? Stormy, Stormy, with a, not with an I, other Stormy. No, I know. I know, I know. <laughs> Not your fave Stormy. Um, different Stormy. I don't even know if her actual name is Stormy, you know? That Stormy. Oh, got but it. she um she got paid like 130 or something, but it was like over several different payments. And what happened was Michael Cohen paid them on behalf of Trump to Stormy Daniels. And so they've taken these like dozen or so payments and they've charged them like three different ways. So that's why there's 34 counts, because they're like Got it. This is a violation of the business like records situation. This is a campaign finance violation. And then they're like doing different angles all at the same activity. Got it. So that's why like there's so many charges, but like not that many instances. Okay. Of whatever. Of whatever. <laughs> <laughs> if he pled not guilty. He did plead not guilty. Well, yeah, that, I meant that. Like I did know that piece of yeah. info. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He yeah. did plead not guilty. So does that mean there's like a full on trial now? Yeah. I mean, unless he like um, settles, which like if you are not notorious and you don't aren't well financed, that's what you usually do. Yeah. Is you like settle and you take like a plea deal and you like, you know, do what you have to do. That's what most people do, unfortunately. Um, but I think like for his situation, he's definitely going to want to go to trial um, or get the charges dropped somehow, try to get the case dismissed or whatever. Yeah, he's way too proud, boys. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and also, like, if he, you know, is found guilty of this stuff or, like, pleads guilty, then he's probably worried about, like, his campaign because he's also the front runner in the Republican Party right now for the presidential nomination. So I think he'll probably go forward with it. After the indictment, it's not like we're going to have your trial next week. Basically, now that he knows that he's being charged, he has the opportunity to look at all of the information that the prosecution has, like discovery, right? I was going to say discovery. Yeah, I've seen Inventing Anna. What of it? <laughs> it is my falling asleep show. <laughs> yeah. So now they're in discovery. That's probably going to take months, definitely weeks and weeks and weeks. It might take months. Um, but basically, the government's going to have an opportunity to ask him for more information and he's going to have an opportunity to look at everything important that the government investigated about him to kind of know exactly all the contours of whatever he's being charged with and what witnesses are they going to call? And what do those witnesses say in interviews that already happened that he didn't know about necessarily? And all that stuff will happen. And then sometimes like in discovery, the prosecutors can find out more and they might like 
ramp up their charges. Sometimes they find like, got it. You know, the opposite could be true where like one witness taps out or something like that. And then it could go like a different way. Um, but that process is going to take a minute. So does that mean he would get less charges? I mean, like, probably not, but that could end up happening. Like the charges can change because of discovery. Got it. Okay. Sometimes when people do like a plea deal, they'll reduce the charges and stuff like that. Do you think he's going to die first or go to jail first? I know. He does seem to be like so physically unhealthy. It's kind of astounding. You know what I mean? That he's up and at him every day. Who's going to tell him that golf is not exercise? (laughs) I don't know. But like, yeah, it's like therapy. Like exercise is the only exercise. Therapy is the only therapy. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. Going to the gym is my therapy, bro. <laughs> ah. Sorry, I dropped my headphone. So he has months and months to look at Discovery and to, I guess, form, uh, I was going to say a stance, um, but to like really make his case. Yeah. Yeah. The trial starts? Yeah. So like uh, the prosecutor will ask for a trial date. Like they already asked. They want it to be blah, blah, blah time. And then Trump's side will have an opportunity to counter and say like, well, we have to work on it for this amount of time. We need to be prepared for trial. Um, So we want it to be this amount of time. Got it. It's going to probably be next year. Okay. And there's like a lot of reporting right now. Like they haven't set the trial date yet, but it seems like it's probably going to be close to like when the Iowa caucus is, which is wild. Oh, my God, I forgot that next year is the election year. Two years. Well, no, it's 2023, so it'll be in 2024. Jake's saying yes, I agree. <laughs> I don't know. This is our law school say so really can't even add four, you know? <laughs> so he's been so he's basically being indicted and he can be indicted during the election and still run. He just, if he's convicted, then he can't run for president. Jesus Christ. I can't believe he's allowed to, like, run freely. Yeah. So Jake's right. So, like, that's why it's interesting, like, that it's right by the indictment. Because obviously, like, it seems like it would be a concern, you would think, to, like, Republican-based voters. I don't know, because I've never met one. But (laughs) that this was going on, you know? (laughs) Sorry. I'm from California, so I've never had the chance, but, um, I'm dead. but I think like it's, uh, it'll be interesting, especially like the more discovery that happens. And then the more that he fights the charges. And, um, I think he's going to get like a lot of press anyway, because it'll be the caucus. And then I'm interested to see, because like, he definitely has the support of the voting base. If other candidates are going to be confident enough to like bring it up. Cause I think that, they're all kind of scared to be like the first one who goes after Trump right now because they don't want to be the one that's like the base doesn't like. Yeah. Because Trump has the base. So it's like you kind of want to like slide in, you know, friends to lovers with the base. Now, so if the trial's next year, is there like a certain amount of time the trial can go on or can it literally just go on? Like, is there a <laughs> like a yeah like a time frame? No, the trial itself can go on. It can just go on. Oh, my God. Trump is the defendant. He has the right to, like, be tried quickly. So he could move up the trial date if he wants. But I don't know, like, why you would want that. If you're the defendant. There's a, yeah, there's a really long statement of facts, and they've been investigating this for a long time. So you'd think you, you would want on your side a lot of time to prepare for your defense also, you know? Yeah. So what, when you, not to circle back, but (laughs) um, when you said that he was getting like multiple charges on the same incident, Mm -hmm. like, what does that mean? Like, what do all of these charges necessarily mean? And are they all kind of the same for like four or five different people? They all relate to like the same activity, which is like this payment to Stormy Daniels. Um, And there's like, obviously there's a cap on how much you can donate to a campaign if you're a person, right? So like there's an argument that this payment was a campaign donation. Oh. Because it was done so that the voters wouldn't know, right? (gasps) 
Oh my God. Wow. And then there's like the business record side, which is that when he paid Michael Cohen back when he was in office, he recorded that as a payment for legal fees. Ooh. Even though there was like a bunch of discussions, apparently, according to Michael Cohen and the National Choir guy, that that it was actually about Stormy. Oh my God, Stormy baby. That is crazy. And then the third one, I think, is like the tax implications also of like how he misrecorded. See, I think that one I'm scared of most. Not that because I'm like doing anything, but like I literally still don't fully know what taxes are. Like I just know that you pay them. No, they're so scary. Yeah. And no one teaches us. Anyway, Chris, we've gone on this rant like truly like we're at this is what our 78th episode. I think I've gone on the rant like 74 times. Well, as you know, tax was my worst class in law school. So please don't ask me any more tax questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I remember that one. I remember that trimester, <laughs> that semester, whatever. <laughs> Is there anything that we should know about the trial or the indictment or that we didn't cover? Yeah, I, mean, I guess like I think there's a really low probability that he would be incarcerated. That's one thing that I think like people should just be aware of. Yeah, because I think like... Um, in general, people are just like really hoping that this is like, like there's like this litmus test thing with Trump where it's like, when is it finally going to be enough? Like, when is the straw going to break the camel's back? What is going to be the ultimate? Yeah. That's like enough is enough. And it's like now, like, I don't want to, I don't want people to think like, we're going to like lock him up. Do you know? Like he is in trouble right now, but like he is a first time defendant and it's like a business record situation. Which is crazy that he's a first-time defendant because, <laughs> wow. Well, first-time felony, you know? <laughs> like, it would be his first felony conviction. So it's like, he he might not do any jail time at the end of the day. I think, like, you know, like, it's good to be holding people accountable, especially who are, like, in extreme positions of power. I think it's cool that this is, like, the first former president that's ever been accountable for, like, ever <laughs> to, to the level of being indicted you know yeah yeah like fourth part of nixon i think but i wasn't alive um but like <laughs> he's really we're getting there in terms as a culture in terms of like accountability but i don't think it's gonna be um like revenge the way that some people my age have been kind of like seeming to hope that it would be like i don't think that if he was incarcerated would and if he's as rich as he says he is, <laughs> is he able to get himself out? I don't know. Do you, are you asking me like, is he able to go to like Martha Stewart jail or like, what's the quest? Like, is there a coupon? I just mean like it, like, I guess I don't know. Bail is before you get convicted. So if he gets convicted, he has to serve that jail time. There's like no outs he can get mm -hmm. maybe like less time. Yeah, but I'm saying even if he's convicted, he might not do any jail time because he's a first-time felony, whatever, in that he would be. He would be a first-time offender. Got it. Okay. So, Eileen, I, I, I have a question. If Trump is elected and this case goes on and then ultimately, could he ultimately be found guilty after being elected? What, what happens in that case? It's not actually like a black and white, clear, definitive answer. The Department of Justice is responsible for, like, ooh, sorry, for charging people with felonies. Um, and they have a longstanding opinion that they don't charge presidents while they're in office. And that's been around since the Watergate era. Um, it's not clear if that's like going to be followed again, because like it was an opinion issued by the Department of Justice, but that's not binding law. But at the same time, that is the organization that will go through with it. So if that's their rule as an organization, they probably would stop prosecuting them, prosecuting these 34 felony counts if Trump was elected. Um, and it's unclear if they would pick it up again after he gets out of office or if they would continue to do it, but in a diminished capacity somehow. But it's their policy that they would not prosecute a sitting president. So, so is he trying to win immunity then? I think he probably would win immunity if he became president. I, yeah, I think he, I think that's persuasive if you're like a 
felony defendant right now, that's a scary place to be. I certainly would never want to be charged by the federal government because they're pretty serious about what they do for sure. Yeah, no, <laughs> that sounds like a big don't want that to happen. Yeah. And especially like this district of New York, they're pretty like tough boys and girls in these. So like I wouldn't want them on on my cell phone looking through my texts. Um, but <laughs> I think <laughs> You know, like you wouldn't want to be a defendant, I don't think. But I think that he definitely, I think it's a good thing that he would get if he became president. I don't know if that's like really the reason. He seems to really love attention as well and drama. So I think that those pull him that way as well. You can tell who I'm voting for. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he would get that if he became president. I think he announced early this like just my speculation but like he announced his campaign pretty early and it was because he heard about this indictment coming up according to like reporting so like i think he might he's definitely aware of this policy that the justice department has and i think he's trying to lean into this dynamic like we had in the 2016 election where it's like, why is the FBI making statements about a candidate? Why is the Department of This making statements about a candidate? Why is the government trying to influence the election? I think he definitely wants to be able to say that to his supporters. Oh, my God. And he got admonished by the judge to not say anything about the judge, not say anything about the attorneys or the prosecutors or the witnesses. And then, like, literally that night, he flew to a campaign rally and he got up on stage and he was like, this Trump hating judge. And he even made some statements about this judge's family like right away. So like, he definitely is not a person to abide by conventions. So I think like that will be a handful for these people who are trying to prosecute him and prove that he did these things because like, he really doesn't seem to take any kind of sort of, sort of formal process seriously. No, he doesn't. <laughs> I would tell you like who knows a different, this about him? <laughs> yeah, a defendant who is situated differently if he went on his Facebook the night after his indictment hearing and his arraignment if he went on Facebook and he started posting things about the judge they, that would be handled really differently than the judge might handle it in this case um, hopefully you know there's no gag order in place right now but that's something that they're discussing and they're going to have to come to like a According to the prosecutor, they want to come to like an agreement where Trump isn't allowed to look at the documents and stuff in discovery unless he's like in his lawyer's office and like he can't take the documents home. And like they're definitely aware of how he massages the rules. And I think they're trying to kind of like forestall some things. Wow. Trump might not be, but I am gagged. <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, you know, if you uh, look up, I looked up the video, just watching him like walk in there. He looked a little gagged. He did look a little gagged. He looked a little skewed, you know? <laughs> Wait, I haven't seen it. Holy shit. I need to. <gasps> and it's like, just so he looks so regular, you know? Oh, love that. But yeah. That's an improvement for him, I would say. Yeah, I really like. I was looking forward to the mug shot. There's no mug shot. Did you hear that he tried to like? He made his own, mm -hmm. or like an, he wanted that to be sent out to press, but yeah. they were like, no. They're like, wow, wow, yeah. I really just wanted to know, like, is it a wig? Like, once and for all, is it a wig? Because if it was, like, they would probably take it off for that, you know? <laughs> oh. And then you get like that gorgeous concealer line of your makeup. Oh, you know? like, oh my God. I literally am damp just at the thought. That's what I really wanted was like an unwigging moment. <laughs> I may not live to see that. You know what I mean? But that's okay. Like I can, I can still like live for the hope, you know? <laughs> Donald Trump's indictment, colon, the unwigging. <laughs> The unwigging of Donald Trump. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Eileen, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge, your wisdom, your beauty, and your grace. Oh, wow. Thank you. And if you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. And there's a function that is my channel. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> uh, yeah. I love you so much. Have a great podcast. I love you. Yeah. Let's watch Girls Trip later. Okay, bye. So, oh, I was meeting to bring this up. Mwah. Love you. <laughs>
Now, before we carry on with the rest of this episode, I'd like to thank Dadgrass for sponsoring this episode. Have you ever just been too damn high? Girl, we've all been there. With today's weed, sometimes it's a dangerous game, which is why Dadgrass is reviving the pleasure of the casual smoke so you can chill out without the stress. Now, Dadgrass is legal organic smokable hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your mind. Their 100% organic pre-rolled joints are very low in THC and high in CBD, so you can enjoy the effects of CBD while keeping a clear head. Y'all know how much I love those three letters, T, H, and C. But while I'm working, it is really nice in the daytime or just when I don't want to be like, you know, like there's just some times where you don't want to be on a different planet. Now, if you want the toke without the smoke, Dagras also has CBD gummies made with the same high quality hemp. They're easy to dose and the effects come on smooth. Now, of course, all Dagras products are federally legal for ages 21 and over and it ships right to your door anywhere in the US. And guys, right now, Dagras is offering our listeners 20% off your first order when you go to dadgrass.com slash unhinged. Again, that is Dagras dadgrass.com slash unhinged. So whether you're looking for a new buzz or a chill way to enjoy an old favorite, dadgrass will leave you in a euphoric mood. So go to dadgrass.com slash unhinged for 20% off your first order. Thank you so much, dadgrass. Let's get back to the episode. Oh my God. Isn't she the best? Eileen was amazing. Wow. She's smart. Um, now to continue the showcase of my stupidity, um, I thought it would be fun to incorporate some sort of game around this. I took, uh, Latin for six, seven years. I'm not really sure. And I'm not really sure why. Um, my parents said that it would be great for SATs and I was like, but I want to take French because that seems sexy. Turns out I was absolutely fucking correct. And so I took Latin, and the only words I remember are ecce, which means look, and then Flavia, which is just one of the girl's names who was a character in the workbook. So it's not ideal, but um, I figured we would go through legal terms that are pretty common and see if I can guess what they mean. Um, And I'm just going to preface with stating, and I don't think I need to, but I will, I don't know really anything about legal anything. Um, I don't even think I described it correctly. So let's, <laughs> without further ado, begin. Okay, what is a Flavia? <laughs> a Flavia is a character in the Ecce Romani workbook. I believe she was in the red one and the blue one. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yep, that's right. I have control of sound effects. So, Chris, what does pro bono mean Ooh, pro bono mm. <laughs> no okay um pro bono let's see pro means four and then bono i remember bene was good see i remember some stuff <laughs> that's really honestly it so like for good does it mean to like make good or no to do oh when you do something f- pro bono i do know that that means for free you're on it for public good I don't know where public came in, but work. Yeah, for free of charge. Work. Okay. I mean, I know the meaning of pro bono, so that one, I feel like I just scammed everyone. Okay. Uh, I had one. Oh, what is in in loco parentis? <gasps> oh, in means in. Uh, loco. F- does that mean crazy or not in sound mind? Known locos parentis. F- Oh my God. I remember in like literally fifth grade when we got to sample all different languages, like for a week or whatever, we did like a list of like Latin in use today. And I was like, well, that's a scam because Latin's a dead language. Uh, fun fact, it is. Let's see. In locos parentis. I do think that it means in like not in sound mind, not of sound mind. Oh, because of loco. <laughs> It's um yeah no it's uh in local parentis means in the place of parent referring to the legal responsibility of someone who was not a parent to take care of a child. I was thinking it was a parent thing, and then I was like, no, Chris, you're just being dumb. This is why I failed school because I was always like gut feeling, and then I was like, no, <laughs> this is what they want me to think. Your Spanish is excellent, though, because loco does mean crazy in Spanish. So I'd say you get an A for Spanish. I mean, yeah, baby. I'm living la vida loca. (laughs) Am I right? 
Yeah, okay. Whole lot of silence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got it. Chris, what is a tort? A tort? <laughs> I know because of Instagram stories, it's something that Kim Kardashian was struggling with on her bar test. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Holy shit, that's so embarrassing, but a true statement. Um, Tort. Tort. Uh, Tort cosmetics. Uh, (laughs) uh, Tort. I don't know. uh, Tort. Oh, like a retort means a response. Oh, is that like a a retort is... I'm retort... Oh, God. You know when you say a word so many times, you're like, am I an avatar? (laughs) Um, Tort. A retort is like a response. So it's a sponsor. It's a, it's a, a opening statement. No, it's a con. It's a, an indictment. Wait, to make this more confusing, I have a. I feel like no. I don't think we need that. No, 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 no. I I love you, Sam. I really do. Your no, it, no. It might it might help. You just said it will confuse. So what's the f- story? Okay, never mind. <laughs> We're because going on trial, Sam. I was looking up tort recently, and I think that it's origin, origins in it's a French word, not Latin. Correct. Wee oui, wee, oui, bitch. And we can tell you what the French word means if that helps you, Chris. Uh, sure. It means wrong in French. Oh, so it just means like a conviction, a charge. It's a charge. Arr. You may have a little more knowledge than Kim K, but uh, in law, a tort refers to a civil wrong that causes harm or injury to another person or their property, and for which the injured party may seek compensation compensation in a civil court. That is a that is a tort. Wow! I honestly, if you ask me just now after <laughs> hearing that, I would be like a civil dispute of law? Question mark. Maybe. It's something that was wrong. You caused harm or injury to a person or their property, and mm. people can the injured party can seek compensation for that. Got it. So I could have put out a tort on my little brother when he was eight and bit my arm, <laughs> and I bled. Your Honor, I bled. Do you know what that does to a person when they bleed? Anyways, um, I don't know how many years you have to file the... Uh, well, it's okay. I'm too tired anyway to file. Uh, what is the phrase de, fact, de facto? De facto day means of, I think. Close. De facto of. Oh, it's not of. Um, Day. Is it away? Mm-mm. Day means less than. <laughs> like detract. De mean means to speak down. Um. Do you mean no wait what am i talking about de oh facto. de facto um i'm now i'm getting like f-ed up because i'm thinking of like defected and i'm like oh it's defected <laughs> uh de facto means of the facts or a way not looking at the facts like that was pretty it's pretty close it's, is it yeah it's just in fact uh, f- this why can't they just say in fact Oh, okay. What about um, mo- modus operandi? Oh, method of operating. That one I do. Damn, you got it. You got it. That's like, what's your MO? Like that one I've got. That one I do remember. Uh, this one I'll give you a hint ahead. <clears throat> uh, Don't tell me. No, no, no. I want to see if I can really guess this. Oh, okay. Well, then, <clears throat> do you want me to skip this one or say it now? Say it. I didn't hear what you said because I was talking. <laughs> okay, good. All right, Chris. Uh, what does pro se mean pro say F- pro means for and say i think means either but or like like but or say yes so it's like pro yes nope no <laughs> no <laughs> that's, it, and that's it, that's what it's not i was just ruling things <laughs> out so you um, can keep do you want you have more guesses no, I'm just doing what I did all throughout college, and that is bullshitting. Hmm. All right. Well, it, it is a Latin term that means for oneself. It refers to your right to defend yourself in court, which is always an option. However, it is ill-advised to do so. Yeah, no, that I could have told you. I mean, I didn't because I couldn't, but I could. Yeah, we get it. 
But Trump likes to take things in his own hands. And if he did do pro se, that might help with the indictment. He should really not do things in his own hands because his hands are microscopic. It can hold nothing. <laughs> like literally, he's like tiny hands vibes. Anyways, um, that's enough Latin. I'm going to leave you all with my own Latin for you, which is semper ubi sub ubi. <laughs> It's not technically correct, but if you look at it word for word, it means always wear underwear. So thank you all for playing Guess That Latin Word in Law Court <laughs> Rooms. Thank you. Uh, now, before we end the episode, I do want to hear from y'all. And if you didn't know, you can call in to 310-844-6459. Save it in your phones. Oh my God, what I really want is y'all to save it in your phones as a contact, like unhinged. And then when you're like f***ed up or something, just call in. You can talk about this episode, talk about a prior episode. Like, let's watch what happens live this bitch, you know? Um, No, I guess that would require having you guys call in live, which sounds way more chaotic than this show already is. (laughs) And for today's voicemails, I figured I would make them all, yep, you guessed it, Chris's court themed. Every once in a while, we did a long string of them for a minute. Um, But I love just getting in other people's business. I'm very nosy, but like not nosy where I'll like go out of my way. But like when things are presented, I'm like, yeah, put that shit on a plate and give me a fork and a napkin. So I love when you guys give me your disputes, your arguments, just the stupider, the better, the dumber, because stupider isn't a word. Thank you guys so much. Um, Yeah, I just love settling debates. So let's hear them. 310-844-6459. Let's get it going. Hi, Chris. My name is Adeline. Hi, Adeline. I love you so much. Thank you. And second, my, like... Something I need debated, like, I don't even know how to say this. That's but, okay, me um, neither. Something I need settling is, is it okay when you tell your friend not to tell her boyfriend something that you said, and she tells him anyways, and says, who's he going to tell? Is that okay? Like, do you think that's, like, pushing over boundaries or something? Because, I don't know. I don't think it's wrong if he's going to tell someone, but also, it's like, if I tell you not to tell him, then don't tell him. You know what I mean? Anyways. Love you. Bye. Thank you. Love you. I mean, I think the, like, cave drawings said hoes before bros. No, bros before... <laughs> I mean, I think the classic cave... I think the classic hieroglyphic said bros before hoes. So I absolutely think you're not in the wrong for feeling that. I always feel the same. And that's the tricky part with people in relationships is that like, if you tell one of them, they're gonna tell the other. Like, it's just a fact. And I don't think that that's fair because if I'm telling you and you're my best friend or my friend, I think it's only fair. You keep it within us. Come on. Ugh. Hate that shit. But I mean... In an ideal world, I guess, is the argument I'm playing. But I guess my advice, I think you're correct. Just let the record show honor. But um, I do think that they should not tell their significant other unless you say that that's okay. But again, ideal world, I don't think... Ugh, I don't think you're wrong for thinking that, I guess is the the final summation. I don't know. Justin, you're in a relationship. Are, is, is there things that you keep? from justina because you don't oh the things that i want to break your bro code i was just gonna say that as the boyfriend and just in general i am like the secret aggregate i like every i am the (laughs) i am the keeper of all secrets so you know all justina's friend secrets can you say one of them now i don't talk out of school yeah i know all of her secrets i could do one of those live (laughs) no (laughs) (laughs) got it okay so even so Okay, so you think that it isn't a problem that her friend told her boyfriend? Uh, I'm, I, you know, I'm more on your side, but it's like you kind of have to expect that if, like, the bond that you share with a partner is so much deeper than the one that you share with friends. Ultimately, in a, in a strange way, that like there aren't really those boundaries. 
But not always, because like some friends I have are like literal soulmates, but there's no romantic connection. So like, I think it, I think if the disclaimer is made where it's like, please don't tell anybody, don't tell your your partner, then it's like, then it's off limits. Then it's on you to be like, then yeah. don't tell me if if you think you're gonna tell them. That's also exactly true. like I will. Don't tell me then that. There we go. Oh, Sam, you always slay. (laughs) Sam the Slayer. Okay, I'm going to play another one. Okay. Hi, Chris. My Santa. Uh, So I have an argument with my fiance currently, and it's that he draws exclamation points like a literal heathen. It's wild. So he will draw the dot and then he'll go up to the top and he'll draw the line down to connect them can you can you settle the fact that that is actually like a sign of the devil thank you (laughs) so okay thank you for calling i think your name was santa i but now that i just said that out loud i don't think it was um so they do a dot go up to the top and then do the line down I think they, they do it. Do they do it like the opposite way you would think? A dot. So and, dot and then up. Yeah. I don't think. I mean, yeah, that's insane because it's just dot or like line dot. But I mean, if you're doing dot and then working your way up, I don't guess I don't see the difference. That seems insane. I'm not going to lie there. But if you're doing the dot, then going back up to the top and pulling down towards the dot which is what I think the caller said, that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. the same thing I'd say to Trump, lock him up, lock him up. That's insane. That is insane. That's like the punctuation version of wiping back to front. Ew. Ew. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Justin, I mean, this is why I need you on the episodes. Or it's like giving, <laughs> giving it just like a, a pat. And then going back up and then waiting. <gasps> You're so right. Oh my God, Justin, you are so right. It's a schmear. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> yeah, let's do another and then we'll call it a day. Okay, yeah, this is. Okay, yeah, I'm going to play. Uh oh. Hello, Chris. Um, I'm going to try to keep this short. Okay. But I'm nervous. I was at my cousin's wedding this weekend and I hooked up with a guy oh. and. I don't think we're like this is sounding bad already so my cousin i'm no. related to him through my dad's side he has cousins that were there that are related to him through the mom's side no. i'm not like but i, I f-ed one of them no so oh it's like we're not cousin. cousins cousins your cousin. but <laughs> <laughs> this is like weird or not no that's weird like, you I know I'm not related. I was fucking adopted, so like whatever. But oh, okay. I don't know. My brain keeps like thinking about. It. I'm like, I'm sure I should have done that. Yeah, no, it I. Was good sex. I'm not gonna lie. Like, no, I have say... fun, but I just, I don't know if I'm like, I, I'm not. I don't know. I'm, I thought I was gonna keep short. I'm right. Like, anyways, I love you. Love your podcast. Love, love you. everything you do. Oh and you. I should go to bed. It's like four in the morning. <laughs> yep. You should have done that also at your the wedding. You should have your cousin tuck you in. Oh my God, Justin, <laughs> no. <laughs> Here's, I've got a lot to say on this one. One, you could not waterboard that out of me. <laughs> you could not pay me enough money to say that, let alone call in to a <laughs> public facing podcast. That is crazy. Secondly, if you have to call a stranger asking if you think it's weird, (laughs) yeah. Ah, oh my God. If there are any family tree explanations you have to give to justify it, (laughs) it's a no. It is a no-go, a no-show, a (laughs) no-blow. Oh my God. I, like, love you. I don't want you to think I'm judging. I'm not judging. Uh, I think I'm, like, walking the line of judging you, if I'm just going to be totally honest. I, I don't know. Like, ye- like I'm really trying to give you the benefit of the doubt here. But it, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. 
yeah, I don't think I have. Yeah, yeah well, like so there's that like curveball. Right. If you front load that, like, hey, I'm adopted and I don't know if like at the end it was kind of weird it came at the end. See, that's like the part that saved it for me was because I was like, okay, well, they're not the same genetics. So like, thank God that baby won't have three legs. But like, ah, even if it's your stepdad, you don't fuck them. Because, no. <laughs> like, oh, I don't know how to feel after this one. Horny. Well, <laughs> Jesus Christ, Justin. Alrighty, and with that, I bid you all to do. Thank you so much for joining in to another episode of Unhinged with Chris Clemens. Be sure to give it five stars and rate it and review it and subscribe to Unhinged with Chris Clemens wherever you get your podcasts. And remember, you can watch this live. Well, not live, but like, you know. It, yeah, you can watch it. YouTube.com slash Chris. Thank you so much. I love y'all. Justin, Sam, and Jake would not be able to do this without you. Huge, huge, huge shout out to my friend Eileen for pulling through and just mm, loving me the way you do, boo. And that was the end of Dr. Seuss. Good night, Moon. I don't know what that was. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, just showing that those were the last books that I read. (laughs) 